The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. Hello, welcome again to Grace in Focus from the Grace Evangelical Society. As we continue with our short series on wisdom literature in the Old Testament with Bob Wilkin, Ken Yates, and David Renfro. Wisdom in the Bible is partly about moral skill. What is moral skill and what will it enable you to do? How do you receive moral skill? All this just ahead. Let me tell you about our website, faithalone.org, a place where you can go to find out more about the Grace Evangelical Society and to find out about our national conference coming up in May of 2023. You can also find out about all of our resources right there at faithalone.org. Now let's go to our discussion today and find out a little bit more about Old Testament wisdom literature. Gentlemen. Welcome back, everybody, to Grace and Focus. We're here with Dave and Bob, and I'm Ken, and we're continuing our study in the wisdom literature in Proverbs right now. We're in the introduction. Proverbs 1. Proverbs chapter 1, verse verse 3. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very brief summary of what we did. Verse 1 of Proverbs chapter 1 is the title of the book, the Proverbs of Solomon. The second verse is essentially the summary of the whole book of Proverbs. It's designed to educate us and give us moral skill. Remember what wisdom means, the skill of living to be a master craftsman at life. Right. That involves two aspects. Number one, moral skill. And the second phrase, to perceive the words of understanding in verse two, mental skill, which is intellectual. God doesn't want us, you know, to have the IQ of a stalk of celery (laughs) and think that that's a spiritual thing. He wants us to learn. Verse three, verses three through five, expand on that idea of moral skill. It goes into more detail about what in the world are we talking about with moral skill. And once again, let me remind you. Almost every word in this passage is important to define and describe. So it's one of those odd passages, and we see that a lot in this verse 3. Notice it says, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. Let me start out with the word receive. I think this is an important point, to receive. We all need to have teachable attitudes. It applies here, but when I was teaching computer programming, I told my students over and over again, there's no such thing as knowing too much. And and that's computers. Apply that here. Can you ever get to the point where you say, I have arrived when it comes to wisdom? No. That means we have to constantly listen. I've noticed in our culture, nobody listens. And if somebody actually took the time to listen, they would actually understand what's going on. Yeah. And we need to sit there. Uh, like I say in one of my sermons, sit there, shut up, and watch what's going on. (laughs) And that's when we're in the presence of somebody that's wiser than we are, and we need to receive that instruction. Sit there, shut up, and listen to somebody smarter than you are. It's amazing what you'll learn when you don't talk. (laughs) Right. That's good. But this is like God speaking to us through his prophet. Exactly, which makes it all the more important. But to receive the instruction of wisdom... I think this is a bad translation because the word for wisdom here in verse 3 is not the same as the other one in verse 2, chokhmah, which is the normal word for wisdom. This is a whole different word, and it pretty much, it would be better translated discipline. We would call it self-discipline or discipline. The other ones also are kind of different. The word for justice is the word that's normally translated righteousness. I love it because I looked this one up in the lexicon, and they say it's similar to, in a baseball game, the umpire's decision. (laughs) You know, observe what's going on and make the right decision. Right. Okay. And then the last one, justice, is... Or equity in the New King James. Yeah. Well, equity is, believe it or not, that which is pleasing. Uh And, And if you put those together, you're saying that this moral skill will allow you not only to observe what's wise, but the wise person is able to do the right thing, make the right decision. What's interesting, too, this is in contrast to verse 4. This is from the student's standpoint, to receive. Like what we did in seminary. What did you do in seminary in the class? Hopefully, you sat there and were quiet and you listened. And certainly a new believer or a young believer ought to come in with this attitude. I agree. I need to listen. In a previous 
podcast, we talked about how culturally we understand these words. I'm struck by the word equity. How would someone today interpret equity? It sounds like a stock or something. And equity and the yeah, we we our Cult- view culturally, culturally equity. equity is not what's going like, on no. here, right? Equality or yes. equal outcome or yes, something. or that's exactly the way our culture would understand that right. word. And I could see a new believer, particularly a young believer, looking at this, going, "Oh, our culture's right. We need to be equal outcome." Ken, that's a great example of us interpreting the Bible based upon our culture. Yes. You cannot do that. That's right. good. If you don't know what is a word, you come across something in the Bible, like the word justification sure. in the New Testament. Sure. Don't come up with your own idea. The problem with doing that is you will interpret the scriptures the wrong way, and you'll apply it in the way the Bible was never meant to be applied. That's a good point. Uh, you know, and that that's why we struggle, <laughs> like we're doing here, struggling word for word to understand this. Well, now, so the word, you use the word pleasing, not pleasing to God necessarily. No, so pl- you're saying it's pleasing probably to God and man. Exactly. And ultimately, this is a source of blessing then to yes, others. Yes, that's right? what, exactly what I was thinking. You can see that this was a blessing to society, a blessing to the family, a blessing to our city, yes. you know, things like that. Exactly. You see how important all these words are? Yeah, that's good. I mean, we have to understand these words in order to approach the book of Proverbs and then the whole Old Testament and New Testament. We have to do this sometimes. So verse 3 is the first one that describes what is moral skill. Verse 4 continues that. Notice it says to give prudence to the simple. There's that naive, that dude, I have no idea. Right. To give prudence to the naive or simple. Another translation of the simple or description of it would be somebody that's gullible, believes every word everybody says, you know. They don't have any knowledge or wisdom to get the idea between truth and falsehood. Mm -hmm. And can I throw in something there? This isn't necessarily a negative thing. They may not be expected to have that. Maybe they're young. They're new to this. And so, yeah, they are gullible. But it's not a, you shouldn't be gullible. You're, this is who you are. You're young. You need to be instructed. Would we say then that this naive person is one that should be says, I need to listen. Absolutely. Yes. I love also the, the, here we go again with another word that we need to talk about. When it says give prudence, what is that? And the Hebrew word there, the best way to describe it is it gives you the ability to foresee evil and prepare for it. That way you can endure it. And that way you can, if you endure it and survive it, what should that result in? Praise of our Lord. Mm Mm-hmm that he gave us the ability to, you know, because he's sovereign. He can bring these things into our lives. That's one thing that jumps out at me a lot here is we need to be prepared for what the Lord is going to bring into our lives. And I would much rather be educated that when that's when such and such happens, I know what to do. Well, yeah, the previous verse was talking about the ability to make the right decision right. based upon wisdom. So when this evil comes then I know what decision to make exactly. because I've been instructed in it. I would rather know what to do when evil comes than be clueless as to know what to do when evil comes. Right. And that's what this is talking about in verse 4, to give prudence to the naive, the gullible, to guide them in the right way so they can survive whatever the Lord sovereignly brings into their lives. And then notice it says in parallel to the young man, Guess who's the gullible? The (laughs) The young young man. Somebody that's not been down the road, and they need to learn. They need to sit there and listen to those that have been down the road and said, if you make this decision, you're going to ruin something, you know? And my response should be, I'll avoid that. I don't want to ruin something in my life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the parallelism here is between the naive and the youth. Correct. The, the young and the naive are yeah, the un, synonymous. The uneducated or the gullible and believes every word. He doesn't know? have life experiences yet. Right. So he needs to listen. He's not made the decision whether to live a life full of wisdom or go the way of foolishness. Right. Okay. So then is knowledge and discretion parallel to prudence? Pretty much. Actually, uh, one uh, one of my professors wrote a whole bunch of stuff on this, and he said... Um, 
actually knowledge and discretion is a figure of speech. We call it hendiatus. All right, two, is, is two that a words chicken? for one, one oh, idea. That's two not words, a chicken. Two words like it sounds I'm, like a female chicken. I'm, I'm good and mad. Right. Good. What does that mean? You're very I'm really angry. mad. I'm right. really mad. And that's what hendiatus is. And if you put that with this, knowledge and discretion, this hendiatus communicates the ability to come up with good plans. So this young man, when some evil thing happens, he's got a plan, and it's a good one. And so the book of Proverbs is designed to equip the young man, the naive, the gullible, to have these plans in order to survive. Uh, what the Lord, like I say, one of the main attributes of the Lord in the book of Proverbs, surprisingly, is his absolute sovereignty over our lives. He will sovereignly bring stuff into our lives to make this stuff live. Mm-hmm. We may have it up here. We got to have it up here first in our brain, because then the Lord will bring something in our lives, and we, at that time, we can apply it. But if we don't have it in our brain yet, we would call that unapplied knowledge or whatever. I don't care. At least it's up here. And if the Lord sovereignly brings something into my life, I know how to act. I know what to say. I know what to do. Because your mindset has been influenced. Right. I've been, I've been, I sat there and I listened to somebody smarter than me. And now I know what to do in a situation like this. And it's true in any field. Like I'm thinking back in the military, we would do training because they would say, okay, when you're faced with this in combat, well, I've never been in combat. Right. But here we are. This is what you do. That's wisdom. And, they're, they're, and that's what we're talking about here uh, with with wise living as well. Right. And just one more thing. Remember, verse 3 was from the student standpoint to receive. Notice at verse 4, to give. That's the teacher's standpoint. Yeah. Somebody that's been down that road. Our job, if we've been down this road, whatever road the Lord sovereignly brings into us, we, I think, are obligated to pass it on to the young the young ones and the, the naive, you know, to equip them for what the Lord is going to bring. Just remember this. If we are naive and we live our lives, we need to <laughs> keep, keep grace in focus. Thank you guys for that great discussion. Are you interested in finding other free grace believers just like yourself in your area? Well, you can do that by going to our website, faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. On our website, we have a church tracker. It's an easy-to-use map that will help you locate those other Free Grace churches that might be in your area. So come visit us at the website and take advantage of our free church tracker. It's at faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. There are a lot of costs involved in staying on the air. That's why we so much appreciate our financial partners. If you'd like to learn how to become one, you can find out more by going to faithalone.org. We would love to hear from you. Maybe you've got a question, comment, or some feedback. If you do, please don't hesitate to send us a message. Here's our email address. It's radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. Next time on Grace and Focus, wisdom is also a mental skill. We invite you to be along for the next Grace in Focus. This is the Grace Evangelical Society. Until next time, let's keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.